I'm gonna share three ways that you know you're gonna be successful in sales. Now in this episode, I'm gonna talk about telesales and then I'll come back with another one just in sales in general. But I want to talk to anyone who sells over the phone for a living, anyone who's in telesales, anyone who initiates a sales engagement by phone, not in person. So this probably won't be you know, the best video for someone if you're standing in like a Verizon or a Sprint store and you have to stand and wait for people to come to you. I'm talking to the sales hustlers who need to go and find prospects who go and prospect on their own and primarily start by phone. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you three things or three signs that you are going to be a dominant sales professional. Let me show you everything I know. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the three signs that you know you're going to be a, a dominant force in this sales game. And the reason why I want to give it up to anyone who sells over the phone is because selling by phone is a different sport. It's, a, it's just a different beast because your prospect, you know, how it differentiates from if you had to sell someone in person is because over the phone they can very well easily just hang up on you or they can make up a, a real lame excuse that you know oh they're walking into a meeting when they're really not or oh they're busy when they're really not and so there's a lot of you know um, kind of holes and variables that can happen over the phone that can't necessarily happen in person so if they came into your store or your shop and they're standing in front of you and like oh you know what I'm busy right now no you're not I saw you walking around here mosing <laughs> I see you window shopping boo boo but where I'm getting at is you know I want to share with you three signs that you're gonna be successful in sales in general but most in particular telesales sales over the phone and these three things are 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 or three signs are things that I've noticed along my way that I've learned the most from my mentors. So you're going to want to watch the video all the way through. Make sure that that if you have not yet identified these three signs, you know, look for them. Look for them in your day-to-day -day action and if they're not part of your day-to-day -day action, then now you know what to include into your day-to-day -day action. So so sign number 1 is your creative. <laughs> And, and you might be like, well, creative how? Do you like, like I know how to draw or I know how to story tell? Well, the latter is true. If you know how to story tell, you're somewhat creative, right? But not necessarily draw, not necessarily like a, like a talent, but you're creative, meaning that you think outside the box. And so, and so the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, I lead a lot of, I've led a lot of salesmen and I currently lead um, some of the absolute best salesmen in my industry right now. And what I noticed the difference between the two is their creativity or their willingness to be creative. And so it, it's not just necessarily, you know, selling like you might think like creative how like lie. No, not, not that you should never lie to your prospects. What I'm getting at is that you're creative with not only your prospects, but also yourself, because there will be times where you're not feeling it. And there will be times where you have to come in and you're the only one who can get into your head that you know, it's, it's your attitude that's going to help you win that day. And so sometimes you got to get real creative. It could be as simple as, you know, making a, a playlist that gets you into that state of mind where you're focused or you're in a better mood or you're, you're energized. And then it can also be as creative as, you know, having like a vision board, right? Like a dream board. If you know, if you don't know what that is, like a goal board, it's got pictures or snips out of I don't know magazines or 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 maybe pictures that you've taken of places that you've been or seen and it's it's your goal so when you look at this board it might be a Ferrari or it might be you know like a, a, a picture of the Hawaiian Islands like that's where you want to go and so you know constantly you're reminded by your goals and and I used to do this back in the day but now what what I have in front of me is my family because that's my goal is to make sure that they're taken care of and make sure I do well for them but everyone's different, right? And so depending on the on the level of experience that you have, your vision board or your goal board or your pictures in front of you may be completely different from mine. But the bottom line is that you're creative in a way to know what pushes you or get creative because what motivates this man or this lady next to you is not necessarily going to be what works for you. You know, so you can't you can't exactly go up to um, a top producer who's been doing it for a minute and then say hey man what motivates you <laughs> you know what I mean because <laughs> it's not necessarily gonna match your 
uh, goal or your vision because they've already kind of paved that way and they've gone through that process already themselves. And so what you you know a good way to figure out what your goal is is always remember what why you started, right? Because that's ultimately going to lead into the second sign of how you know you're going to be successful. And that, and bef and before I even go into the second sign, let me explain why creativity is, is important. Because when you get into a point where you get hit with an objection or you get into a sales uh, situation, like let's say in my line of work, I have to have my clients in some cases pull up their tax returns, right? They got to pull up two years tax returns, all, you know, all pages. And, you know, most homeowners, they don't know necessarily keep an organized spot where they keep their all their tax returns and if they do then they don't really want to dig it up you know what I mean and sometimes I'm going two years back if they haven't if they did an extension the year of then I'm going two. you know I'm technically I'm going three years back and so these people got to dig inside their their storage sometimes their file cabinets to find these documents in order for me to do my job well creativity would think outside the box and say oh yeah you know what don't worry about it I don't even want you to have to dig that up you know, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, just give your accountant a call, and then maybe send a, 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 a borrower's authorization to let them know that you gave me the okay to talk. You know, to talk to them. You know, I'll probably include you in an email to make sure that you know they know that that I'm uh, requesting with your with your permission granted. And so now you're reaching directly out to the CPA who knows exactly where their tax returns are. Again, it's just creativity. And sometimes what holds us back is that we'll let an excuse be the reason why our prospects don't move like oh yeah I just I don't have a fax machine or oh yeah I don't have a scanner at home you know your your creativity will remind you that you could pull up a Yelp enter in their address and look for the, the local Kinko's or you know like a FedEx location right or be like oh yeah don't worry about it you know that one Kinko's that's on the corner of Santa Ana and Broadway well yeah I'm gonna have that those documents waiting for you just go up to the clerk and let them know your name and they'll hand you you know a faxed uh, stack of papers and so while you're there you know just go ahead and bring over these items so you could fax it all back to me once I receive it I'll confirm with you and you'll have an answer by by end of day today and so there is that creativity right whereas if you were not using any creativity then or thinking outside the box then you may accept that that excuse and be like oh, man this person doesn't have a fax or a scanner not too many people have fax or scanners right and then there's other things like uh, you know just understanding the resources around you, and 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 putting your prospect in a creative state also, where you're just like, oh yeah, don't worry, you know, like you take pictures with your cell phone, you know, text it to me, and then I'll email it to myself. It's just it's thinking outside the box. So creativity helps a lot as well as answering objections. But the second sign of knowing that you're going to be successful in sales, especially in telesales, is that you you have a reason why like there's a there's a destination that you're 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 trying to reach because in telesales it's a it's a it's a grind right it's it's a it's a tough sport it's a blood sport you're gonna get beat up here and there and the the thing is though is that with with sales what will keep you going or what will help encourage you to keep pushing past what you believe is a challenge or resistance is remembering why you started and so again depending on your age depending on your level of experience you may you know you may have different goals than I did when I was young and and whatever your goal is you're gonna understand what it is because it, it, it makes your heart beat faster you know it, it, it brings a smile to your face it uh, it enables you to look at any challenge with enough enthusiasm to where you're eager to go through it and so that that could be monetary gain. It could be you know um, leveling up the quality of your life, helping your family, raising your family, starting a family, you know, um, or you know like Gucci flip flops. You might just very well want some Gucci flip flops. And hey, you do you, boo boo. Whatever it is, you know, just figure out why you started. But understand that once you achieve that one thing, it's got to continue growing. And so, you know, when you get your Gucci flip flops, then what? Are you gonna are you gonna relax? <laughs> are you gonna be like, all right, dog? Well, I made it, bro. Okay, I'll be over here. <laughs> you know, you can't necessarily ease up. So, so understand that that when you hit that goal, the goal's got to be high. The goal's got to be high enough to where, you know, you you can envision yourself in it and having it, and you feel deep down in your heart that it's you are destined to make that happen. And so. Besides understanding 
your why and knowing where you're going. The third uh, sign that you're going to be successful in sales, especially in telesales, is uh, you like music. I know, it's crazy, right? You'd be like, D, who doesn't fucking like music? No, I'm talking about like music in a whole nother different way. Like, you like music because of the way it makes you feel. You like music because of of the state of mind it puts you in. Because if you like music that way, you don't like music like, oh, okay, this is catchy. Like, you like music to the point where you use music as a vehicle. Then what happens is you're, you understand how it affects you. You understand that it, it changes your state of mind. It changes your state of energy. It changes your perception of certain things. And so, you know, when you go to the gym, you might have a certain type of music that puts you in a different state of mind, a state of mind of hustle, a state of mind of cardio, a state of mind of movement, dancing, because it affects you emotionally. And so you have the emotional intelligence to understand how music affects you so you can hack yourself to become more driven, more energized, more enthusiastic. Um, you can you can use music as a tool to change your attitude, but more importantly, you understand that the tones of music and the rhythm of music can also change and alter the state of mind of those you talk to because our our tone, our words, the, our vocabulary, our speech, it, it all it is is sound, right? It's just sound. And so what's the difference between between speech and music is is rhythm. <laughs> it, that's it, right? So you might be like, yeah, but there's instruments. Those instruments create sounds, and those sounds are just rhythm. It's an energy. It's a it's a it's an emotion. You can do the same with your tonality. You can do the same with your speech. It's like um, it's like when you have guests over, right? And you're expecting the guest. There's a tonality when you greet them. That's oh hey what's up man you know what I mean like there's that there's that tonality whereas if is if someone just knocked on your door randomly that you didn't expect and they're trying to sell you something there's a different tone you're not gonna answer the phone like hey yo what's up man welcome come on in <laughs> you know yeah how can I help you right there's a different tonality and all it is is sound and so when you understand the the art of music and you really like music in that way. Um, and you understand how it it hacks your attitude and your mindset and your energy, then you start to appreciate it so much and you like it so much that you use it as a way to hack your ability to change the state of your prospects. And so you can alter their attitude. You can alter their mood. You can get them excited. You can get them wanting to learn more. You can get them curious about what it is that you have to sell. So those are the three signs. And uh, and I hope that one of them does help you or you are identifying one of those three as uh, part of your daily routine every single day so that you can be better than you were the day before. If you like this video, please comment, like, and share. Share it with somebody who needs to see this. And, and if you have those three signs, let me know which of the three you think is most powerful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Why am I naked, fool?